Hey, g'day guys, it's uh, Kristen Harper here and welcome to the Rosebank Leadership Series. And this is where I'll be talking to some of the business leaders in the Rosebank area to share some insights just around how they've been uh, you know, dealing with the COVID-19 um, pandemic that we're all going through at the moment and what they're doing as a business and as a leader to, um, I guess, help grow the business and, and move forward from here. And uh, today I'll be speaking with uh, Paul Lamy, the uh, Managing Director from Bonacord. So, Paul, firstly, thank you very much for your time. Uh, you know, as, I started, as we were talking earlier, it's definitely been a bit of a uh, different time that we're living through at the moment. It'd be great if you could uh, just share with me what you do, a wee bit of your background, and really how this has actually prepared you for what we're going through right now. Okay. Uh, um, Bonacor uh, is a hospitality supply company, Kristen. We supply mainly cafes, but also restaurants. Uh, so, so, so you guys have been pretty, pretty hard. Yeah, well, ninety-eight percent of our revenue is derived from uh, that particular sector. We do oh, a little wow. contract manufacturing as well. So, as you'll appreciate, it's been totally shut down. Mm. So, uh, our revenue was uh, about five percent of our budgeted total. In fact, slightly less for April. And wow. the only reason it was that high was that we had a couple of orders go, one to Japan and one to China. Yes. They were small orders, but um, in terms of local engagement with our customers, in terms of sales, uh, it was virtually zero. Wow. So the effects have been catastrophic for us, in short. And yeah, you still have a smile on your face, which is really encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> well, the level two announcement gives us uh, some encouragement. Uh, yes, three, we saw a bit of a building in our in our sales as people engaged, as some of our customers engaged in click and collect. Yeah, uh, so that's good to see. It was great to see them back working. They're very happy to be doing that. Yeah, I bet they are. Ready, willing, and able to to support them. Uh, in, in the transition now to level two. Yeah, I, I think it was great to get that. And I, I think for all businesses, as a, I think I felt like it was like a really big sigh of relief. Yeah. And what have, what have you done with your time over the last six, um, you know, sort of over the last six to eight weeks to, I guess, actually prepare for yourself when we come out of this? All right. Okay. Well, our, our catchphrase over this time as a management team has been be ready. So, yeah. Yeah, what we've been doing um, is working on product development. Uh, we've been talking to a lot of business leaders in our sector, mm. um, trying to gain a little bit of market intelligence, really, on what their expectations are beyond COVID, uh, uh, where they see their budgets running, mm. uh, trying to get a window on on how that's going to affect us. So yes. a, as a result of that, we, um, we put together some financial models ourselves. Uh, and to, to, to be honest, Kristen, they were so horrendous mm. at the start. Uh, we were looking at cash flows that, uh, uh, that were nothing short of uh, catastrophic. Uh, so we've done a lot more talking, a lot more thinking. Yeah. Uh, we've got a bit more optimistic ourselves. So we're using that as our worst case scenario. And we've created uh, cash flows and budgets that reflect what we think is going to be the real situation yeah. as we engage beyond COVID. It's been interesting. It was, it's, it's been interesting and encouraging talking to a lot of other business leaders and everybody's like yourself has used this time to really look at how they can pivot, how they can grow and really um, do some of those things that they've been putting, I guess, putting off in the past. It's, it's given that sort of window and uh, yeah, really excited to be getting back into that next step. You know, how have you been preparing for every week, I guess, given what's at stake? I know you've, you've talked about doing the financial modelling and all that sort of stuff, but I, I think probably the questions is more, like, personally, how do you prepare for that? You know, when you've got a number of staff that you're looking after, you know, it's not only the uh, the business side of it, then you've got the emotional impact of, of your teams. And as a leader, how do you, um, how do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's that's really hard. Um, that's that's been the toughest thing for me, Kristen, because we have great people here, and and we like to think we're the, we're like a family, really. But 
as I mentioned, those financial models that we looked at initially told us a story that we couldn't ignore yeah. in terms of cost mitigation and reduction. So we've gone through and we've looked at every cost, literally every cost in the business. And um, <clears throat> we came to the conclusion that we needed to save a certain amount of money, um, mm -hmm. which uh, required us, once we'd looked at everything else, to look at our staffing levels. Mm -hmm. And um, and we made the tough decision to let uh, three or make three positions redundant hmm. uh, within the organisation. So uh, uh, yeah, and That's... then we entered into the process of that. And uh, I, I've got to say that uh, you know getting scripts and so forth from our HR provider and and all that sort of thing created a level of impersonality, if you like, if that is even a word, but it was an impersonal process that, that I absolutely hated. Hmm. Um, I, it's and, the unfortunate uh, thing of this whole pandemic is, is I think that side of it is, um, that's the, but that's a really big cost, isn't it? It, it, it is. And, and, and look, the, the government's initiative in getting the um, wage subsidy in place has been such an incredible help, mm. even though it's not even minimum wage. It's still, um, you know, it's, it's still been a, 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 of great assistance to us. But the tough calls still need to be made. Yeah. And I think at the end of May, when you consider that most contracts have a four week notice period, that's going to be a period of intense activity as companies yeah. face the prospect of not having that ongoing support from the uh, wage subsidies. Yeah. So we moved early and the rationale behind that was it gives our people the best chance to get another job before all this yeah. really starts to unravel. So yeah. um, it was tough and it was hard, but, but we felt it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And look, finally, Paul, what other advice would you give to any other leader you know, within the Rosebank area? going through this right now, do you have any one piece of advice that you could give um, or, or many pieces? <laughs> yeah. One, one of the things that we've, we've recognized we need to do is enter into a, a greater level of partnering and relationship, mm. uh, not only with our customers, but also with um, uh, sector participants. Mm. Yeah, you know, we can see a lot of synergies between some of our competitors and us. So uh, we've, we've started entering discussions oh, wow. um, so we're, we're a food service company primarily but we're looking at partnering with people who will give us a, a retail uh, interface so yeah. that's our little pivot if you like um, yeah. so thinking about that um, awesome. so, yeah partnering is the is the catchphrase that I'd use for the for the future in terms of us certainly I think that's really key to end on. So, look, Paul, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate your um, your insights and your feedback. I know this hasn't been an easy time, but um, coming into level two, hopefully things start, you know, building ground up. But I really appreciate your time, Paul. Thank you very much, Kristen. All the best. Cheers. Thank you.